It's laminin. You gotta tell them about laminin. That's laminin? I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Woo! I love laminin. Did you know that there is literally, literally evidence of the Bible inside your body? right now. I didn't know this, but according to the Christian minister Louis Giglio, it's true. So let's watch his video and see what he has to say, and then hopefully I will see you at church next Sunday. <laughs> you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't really know if that's a compliment or an insult, but so are you, Louis. So are you. And the God of the heavens is the one who fashioned you together. I really hope you're going to provide some proof or citations for that later on in this video because otherwise it just sounds like you're quoting from the Bible. And I don't have any reason to believe that that's true. And he knows your name tonight and he knows every single thing there is to know about you. Well, if God knows everything that there is to know about me, then he also knows that I don't believe in his existence because I've never found any compelling proof of his existence. And if that is the case, and God does care about me, and he doesn't want me to go to hell, and he does want me to go to heaven, then he should know what kind of proof I would find compelling and provide me with some of that proof. But he hasn't done that yet, so I really don't know if he does exist, or if he does exist but just doesn't care about me. And he's made you a promise. I've never heard God speak to me, much less give me a promise, but what is this promise, Louis? That for those who trust in him, he will literally hold them in his hand and carry them all the days of their life. Literally? He will literally... God will literally carry people around in his hand all the days of their lives? Literally? 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 Then why aren't you in God's hand, Louie? From what I can tell in this video, even though it's really low resolution, you look like you're standing on a stage. This Psalm 33 that talks about a star-breathing God turns an interesting corner. God breathes stars? That's an interesting corner in itself. What are the implications of that in heaven? Are there just stars floating around everywhere so that God can breathe? And do those stars have planets? And is there life living on those planets? So could this mean that we are living on a planet that is orbiting a star in heaven that God is breathing? Christian theology just gets weirder and weirder. I, I don't even know what to think anymore. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood fast. That's power and awe. But now it gets very personal. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of them all and is intimately acquainted with everything they do. If God literally, literally forms everybody's hearts, then why are there people born with heart problems? And then he goes even further. Well, then let's keep going. And he says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. Isn't it weird that Christians are supposed to fear the God that they also say loves them? That seems like kind of a toxic relationship. On those who hope in his unfailing love, and here comes this promise, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. Then why do so many people, including Christians, die of starvation? It doesn't really seem like God is keeping his promise, Louis. And that is the promise tonight, because this building and our world is filled with hurting people, with lives that are spinning out of control, with pain that we, don't, we didn't ask for or could never imagine. Well, then God's not really good at keeping his promises, is he, Louis? And God is making a promise to us tonight. He's saying, I am a universe maker, and I am a heart former, but I'm also big enough to be intimately acquainted with all the circumstances of every one of your lives. And I promise you, no matter what comes in this lifetime, no matter how difficult the road or how dark the night, I will hold on to you, and I will literally, 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 literally hold you together and carry you through any and every circumstance that ever comes your way any moment on this planet. I don't understand this. You're saying that God is going to deliver people from all of these terrible circumstances, but there are still people, including Christians, who are going through all of these terrible circumstances. So what good is God's promise? What
what is he doing? You're saying that he's all powerful and all of this wonderful stuff, but he's not doing anything clearly. There are still Christians who are experiencing homelessness. There are still Christians with heart conditions. There are still Christians who are going through things that are more terrible than you could ever possibly imagine. What is God doing to help them? What is his promise actually accomplishing? It's the promise of God. Well, then God is evidently not delivering on his promise. And you say, well, man, that sounds good. But how do I know that's true in my life right now, Louis? Great question. I would like to know. I mean, that's really what we want to know tonight. That is what I would like to know, yeah. And I'll tell you how you can know tonight that God will always hold you together no matter what. Well, that's good to know. I hope you can deliver on your promise better than God can. It's by looking a little deeper into the human body. And it's a little protein molecule called laminin. I really don't see how that's going to be relevant to what we were just talking about, about God delivering on his promise that he is going to deliver people from famine and heartache and all of this other terrible stuff, but I guess let's find out. Yeah, that's about what I felt the first time I heard that. <laughs> Long story short, the tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. How would you know that something was of God? Introduces himself to me, says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down. Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. Oh my gosh, just get to the point, Louie. You are taking so long building up this story. He said, oh, cool, what are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God and the human body. Well, that must be a very interesting series. Do you talk about all of the terrible birth defects that humans are sometimes born with or all of the terrible conditions that humans sometimes develop simply from living life as a human? The human body doesn't really shout out the glory of some God. It doesn't appear to be something that was designed very well by some all-powerful, all-knowing God. Unless, of course, you are looking at a perfectly healthy human, and if that is the case, then you are just being very disingenuous and biased and a little bit bigoted. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. So this guy is a molecular biologist, and he believes that the human body was designed and created by a god rather than evolved over time like all of our scientists science points to. It sounds like this biologist went to the same university that Kent Hovind did. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You got to have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie. Oh, man, your left hook is laminin. He said, Louie, cells organize into certain molecular structures, and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure, and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like... All right. He said, no, Louie, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louie. It's laminin. you got to tell them about laminin. I'm like, okay, let's see it. Yes, please. Can we just see it? Takes his card out. He writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminin, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like, wow, that's laminin? The cell adhesion molecule. Woo! 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 I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. <laughs> you should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now. Okay, this is what I found right here. Okay. And? No, come on. That's crazy. <laughs> That's just crazy. What's so extraordinary about this? Why is everybody cheering? It's a pretty simple shape. I <laughs> can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast. I'm like, wow, 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 wow. What in the world? He said, you want to see an actual 
laminin molecule. So I'm like, yes! And he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. I really like how when Louis showed the diagram of laminin, everybody started cheering immediately because, you know, it does look like a cross. But then when he showed the actual photo of laminin, there's this very delayed reaction. It looks just like this. You can tell that everybody's pretty disappointed that it doesn't actually look like a cross, but then they just start cheering out of obligation a few seconds later. Because it is pretty disappointing, this picture doesn't look anything like a cross. And this is the best one too. If you look at other photos of laminin, they don't look anything like a cross at all, even if you use your imagination. Good job, Louis. That's a really good left hook. I'm sure you're going to change the world. You're going to convert everybody to Christianity with this photo right here. I'm like, how crazy is that? No, it's really not all that crazy, Louis. It's not very extraordinary for something in nature to assume one of the most simple shapes you could possibly imagine. All it takes is two objects or two lines crossing paths in some arbitrary way. It's not very miraculous or crazy. The stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't really know if I would say that's the perfect shape. <laughs> and immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul. Yeah, that's totally the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this picture. The words of Paul. Yeah, that verse where Paul was talking about those two squiggly lines. <laughs> In Colossians 1, you know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. But then the next verse goes on to say this. It's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things. And in him, that is, in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. It's right, it's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. Wait, so are you implying that Paul knew about the protein molecule laminin when he was writing this verse and that's what he was referencing? You know, kind of a deep cut? Or are you suggesting that thousands of years ago, according to your worldview, when God was designing humans and designing protein molecules, he created laminin to look like a cross because he knew that thousands of years later, Paul would write that verse. I'm kind of confused about what you're suggesting here, Louis. Either way, it seems like a bit of a stretch. Even more of a stretch than saying that laminin looks like a cross in the first place. Ah! But I guess you're just not supposed to think about it. You're just supposed to look at the diagram of laminin and how it looks like a cross and just be amazed and then just assume that everything else makes sense. I don't know. Everything holds together in Jesus Christ. You know, it's also really weird, too, if you think about it, that when God was designing the very first human, Adam, and he was creating laminin, he made it in the shape of a cross, which is the thing that his son would later suffer and die on, which was all a result of Adam and Eve sinning in the garden. But that hadn't happened yet when God was creating humans. So was all of this predestined? Was all of this part of God's plan? So was Adam just doomed to begin with because God had already decided that he was going to have this homage to something that would happen later on literally 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 in Adam's body that's really weird it kind of makes it seem like humans didn't actually have free will and it was all just scripted by God to begin with because he wanted to have these little Easter eggs and you know the protein molecules of our bodies I would like to hear Louis Giglio actually explain the implications of this laminin theory so yeah this was Louis Giglio's evidence of God in the human body obviously this was evidence of nothing more than pareidolia but it was fun to look at Literally. 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 Literally.